So there is some more to be said about uh, the power of prayers. Uh, the last time we kind of have uh, scratched on the surface a little bit of the topic. You know, there was a question raised by David uh, about the role that prayer plays in Buddhism, and um, we discussed a little bit that uh, in Buddhism we're not praying to a sort of personalized God that is here to fulfill your wishes or some sort of deity or something like that. It is rather uh, remembering our innermost core qualities uh, such as awareness and um, uh, the knowledge of truth as our true refuge rather than uh, relying upon some external um, entity to help or support our life we are rather relying upon internal qualities that being said and that being discussed I think it is also important to mention that there is such a thing as uh, aspiration and prayer in Buddhism as well there is also the relying upon an external guide as well it can also be the reliance upon uh, external deities or something like this as, as a means, a skillful means to help the practice mm -hmm. for example uh, you can pray uh, to your inner uh, wisdom or your inner qualities awakened qualities for guidance, for help in your daily life you can ask for particular manifestations in your daily life to help you train certain qualities such as patience or kindness uh, or giving, the quality of giving uh, we can all ask for a certain, um, how do you say, maybe the word could be divine messenger, uh, devaduta, and just somebody that comes into your life, or it can be a situation or anything, an appearance in your life that is able to help you advance on the path. And say, for example, you want to perfect patience, you want to train yourself in the virtue of patience, and it is very good having people who are upsetting around you. It's very good to have circumstances that are kind of annoying happening and arising around you. And you actually can pray for that. You can uh, concentrate and voice your aspiration. For example, please send me challenges or something like this. It is not so important to who we address the prayer, but rather the aspiration here is important the purpose of prayer, the purpose of asking for something. So we all have certain aspirations, we're all uh, living, I say, we're living a life in which we have certain goals, right? And uh, also that is true for the spiritual path. At least in the beginning of the spiritual path, in the middle of the spiritual path, there are goals. We are here maybe because we want to have a better lifestyle, want to be a little bit more happy, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more joyful. Maybe we are here because we want to be enlightened, we want to go all the way, we want to let go of suffering completely. This is also something that can be voiced to give it power, to bring it into your awareness, to know what you are doing. So you can sit down with a well-concentrated mind, become aware of what you are doing right now. For example, before you start a meditation and actually ask your teacher, your master or the Buddha himself visualizing the Buddha you can ask for guidance and help and blessings during your practice which is immensely helpful I personally find it a very powerful practice to imagine before I start my meditation that I get in touch with the Buddha himself and ask for guidance and blessings and I would visualize that, for example, in the form of light that I inhale or for the form of light uh, that enters the crown of my head and fills my body. So that I visualize the blessing that comes from a higher guidance. Something that I can't really define. However, one thing that I know is that this Buddha that I visualize is simply an aspect of my innermost wisdom nature. It is not something that exists independently of my awareness or separate from awareness or outside of awareness. It is something like awareness itself 
guiding itself back onto itself. And I trust in that process. I have faith in that process. I know that everything in my life is happening for the particular reason to help me on my spiritual path. I know that I meet people in my life. So it helps me on my spiritual path. Sometimes I meet people who are very critical of what I say or what I do. Sometimes I meet people who are very appreciative of what I say or what I do. Both can help on the path. One can help to avoid the error of pride, by identifying with pride. Wow, I'm special, I'm good, I'm a great teacher or something like that. And the other can help avoiding the error of feeling, uh, well, downhearted, you know. Oh, I'm worth nothing, I'm not a good person, my teachings are not helpful, something like that, yeah. So we can avoid these two downfalls of identifying with pride or identifying with... Um, with the opposite of pride, feeling defeated, unhappy about yourself, self-hate, self-loathing. So sometimes I also um, become aware of other beings in my life in a very specific way, more like a reflection of myself. So I meet particular people in my life like a little reflection of a state in my heart. Everyone that we meet um, goes into resonance with ourselves, with a certain aspect of ourselves. Let's say someone comes into the room in which you are in a particular emotional state, and that particular emotional state resonates with a particular aspect of yourself. And that can serve as a teaching. It can serve as a proper reflection, helping ourselves to identify things and tensions in ourselves that we can let go of, helping to identify states of mind which are skillful so we can uh, help them to grow, or states of mind which are unskillful so we can help to let, let them go. So other people can always be some sort of angel or divine messenger around you that are there to help you to relax deeper, find more happiness, more kindness, more fulfillment. So that way your life can become very rich. Every experience that you make in life can be a great teacher that way. Every experience. I have no idea what's happening right now with my eyes. I'm losing eyesight very slowly <laughs> just now. Can be a teacher also. I see less and less with every minute. Just white, flimmering light. I have that sometimes. It has something to do with blood vessels or something, I think. I'm not quite sure. It can be quite unsettling. I can sit here and think, oh my God what's going on, am I losing eyesight or what? But instead I just relax. My eyes are not actually belonging to me. My eyes do what my eyes do. Sometimes they are doing fancy things, losing eyesight a little bit, and eyesight comes back later. Or maybe not. Then there will still be a way of living my life, right? Even without eyesight, we can still relax. Find another way. Using the ears more, for example. The point is, anything in life can help us to learn to relax. To accept the way it is. Instead of freaking out about the way it is. Getting all fearful and caught up in the situation. Simply relax. You put it down. At some point, uh, the greatest teacher in life will be final illness, uh, terminal disease, and death. That's a tet. Tougher than eyesight. Becoming kind of weird. So if I cannot relax with even minor things, then it's hard to relax with major things, which are definitely bound to happen in life. Major problems, major illness, major accidents and these kind of things. 
So I pray that I have the strength to cope or to say, to have the space to cope with whatever arises in my life, giving it, receiving it in calmness, in relaxation, in wisdom, in knowledge. Not receiving it with fear, with resistance. So rather that things that come up in my life are helping to generate more kindness, more understanding, more compassion, more wisdom, more awareness. That everything is leading to waking up more and more. That's what I pray for. And I would sometimes voice this. And I would ask my teacher to send me blessings in whatever ways. Now, I'm not so much concerned with whether my teacher is hearing me and actually is sending me these kind of blessings. Whether the Buddha is actually picking up what I say. Whether there is some Buddha floating around in space that hears me and <coughs> sends me things and help. I don't really care. What is important is that after such a prayer, I'm kind of more open-minded and ready to receive things in life differently. Because I've asked for something. That power of prayer can be compared to the power of making, having the aspiration to wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning because you cannot miss your flight and you have no alarm. Then you voice a prayer. May I wake up at 5 a.m. I definitely have to wake up at 5 a.m. So what will happen? You wake up at 5 a.m. We all know this, these kind of things. It's called prospective memory. We are aspiring something to happen in the future. And our aspiration, our intent, our strength, our focus is bringing that into existence. The more we are dealing with what we want, the more power we are giving it. If you want to be more kind, you can pray for more kindness. Now in Christianity, we are ending the prayer with the word Amen. Now Amen, does anyone know what it means? What does it mean? Yes. So be it. Yeah. So be it. That is a very powerful voicing. I mean, so be it. Now that is also at the same time, I think, a sort of um, hint to a particular feeling state that we can get into. So be it right now. How would it feel if it is? We're accepting it as a reality. It is like this. So be it. May it come into existence like this. It is done. It's even probably um, a more powerful way of saying it. It is done. Now you, you pray something, you pray for something, and after the prayer you say, it is done. That indicates your faith in the process. So now that you've voiced what you really want, you don't need to do much more. You don't need to be upset about it. You're already on the direction. You're already on the path. Now everything that arises in your life, you can trust, is helping you on your path. It's very positive, very uplifting, very helpful. So for example, let's say, it's a very simple example. Uh, I'd like to be more patient. So I imagine, how would it be like to be more patient? Well, that would be great. Here is my prayer, yes. It would be great to be more patient. May I be more patient? Then I visualize myself more patient. And then I end the whole thing with, it is done. Amen. And now I feel that the patience is growing inside of me. Do you see how powerful that is? It's simple, it's straightforward. 
and it does work because now you're watching your life it's like I can feel it grow I can feel my patience grow I, I'm, I'm getting more and more patient so next time someone offends you you're a bit more patient you immediately will go like yep there it is I'm more patient fantastic it works It's very nice. Oh, I want to be more kind. I want to be a kind person. And I visualize myself as an incredibly lovely, warm-hearted guy. Light radiating from my heart. I would go around in my day-to-day -day life visualizing that I radiate kindness. I visualize it. I feel it. I enjoy it. Instead of continuously thinking, oh, is the, I'm not kind enough yet. I could be a bit more kind. I rather just imagine it. And I feel the, the, the amen effect. That it is done already. It's, have, it's already uh, having a momentum. It's working. That's so uplifting. It makes me happy. It, it is a very joyful thing. What doesn't help at all, and what I have been doing a lot, and what I still tend to do sometimes is seeing where it does not work. Uh, yeah, I've been meditating, but I still cannot focus. So I, I'm meditating and uh, I'm still getting upset and angry. Instead of giving more power to the process of meditation, instead of investing more faith into my abilities to be focused and happy and clear and so forth, I'm investing all this kind of energy of faith, which is a strong energy, I invested into my disabilities, the things that I cannot do. Hmm? You see where that doesn't help? Now look at your own kind of mental makeup. We are in fact making prayers as we go along through the day, continuously. We are voicing wishes, intent in our mind. Wow, I wish, you know, I wish my life was better, I wish it was happier. Yet there is a kind of, we're not acting in accordance with it, we're rather acting in accordance with the personality that we don't desire, or with the circumstances that we don't desire. So instead of giving more energy to having nicer staff, we're giving all the energy into fighting with the problematic staff that we have. or. Uh, bringing more energy into your relationship, into the beautiful aspects of your relationship. Instead, we bring all the energy to criticizing our partners all the time, which then has an equal response, of course. So it doesn't really get better. So there is this power of prayer, which is actually very great. It's a power of manifesting things that you want to manifest and using the mind, our emotional input, and the physical reality of our actions, of speech and physical action, to actually manifest a reality which is beneficial, useful, helpful, not only for ourselves, but for all living beings. Now, in my opinion, such an endeavor should be based only and exclusively on kindness. It could be, and for most people it would be based on greed. Oh, I can have everything that I want. I can manifest whatever I want. I want this and I want that, and, and still we're never satisfied. And sometimes it doesn't work. We're operating based on greed more and more and more. It doesn't work like that. Operating based on kindness, that whatever you do on the mental plane, on the emotional, physical plane, is incredibly beneficial for yourself and all others. A person that acts in such a beautiful threefold way, based on kindness, is a person that is very welcome, that is not feared, a person that we like to spend time with.
a person that is uplifting, not a person that pulls you down, but a person that lifts you up. And you can be such a person. Thing is, we, we don't really think we can be such a person. We often think, oh no, I'm not good enough, I'm, I'm not kind enough, I'm not focused enough. Well, you could say you're right there. There's a story of a, a teacher sitting in a room and he sits there with three students who are studying and meditating. And um, so two students in the room are kind of having this argument, this philosophical debate. And so the debate is whether one should entirely rely on a teacher or whether one can make it alone. Can I become enlightened only with, by myself without the help of books and teachers? And so one student says, yes, it's possible. You, we, we can do it. You know, We can do it all by ourselves. The Buddha has done it. And so the other student says, no, no, even the Buddha had teachers. And even the Buddha had to reflect on the world around him. And, and so they got into this kind of uh, argument back and forth, back and forth, and it became more and more heated. So eventually, one of the students said, okay, okay, enough. Let's go to the master and clarify it once and for all. And so both go to the master. And so student A presents its, uh, the, the dilemma and says, so here, here we go. I believe that um, it's important to go the path all by yourself, not relying upon a teacher, but to just only see and realize yourself. And the teacher says, you're right. <laughs> the first student goes, see, I've been right. So the student, the second student then answers and says, but how can he be right? Everything he was talking about right now, it comes from things that you have taught him. All the steps that he made on his path come from the help of his friends on the spiritual path and the book he was studying before and so forth. How can, he, can you say that he is doing it all by himself? And the teacher thinks a little bit and says, Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and so the third student who has been overhearing the conversation behind is like, How can both be right? They're totally opposing one another. And the teacher says, Yeah, it's true. You're right too. <laughs> We are all constantly right. That's why the world is such a mess. Everyone is right all the time. I'm always right. And we're willing to go to war because we feel we are right. We have this sense of righteousness. What I do is... I, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of the good guys. And I'm right. It's this sense that we have about ourselves. It's always very very noble and correct we wouldn't doubt we wouldn't doubt our mind or our emotions or his feeling yes it's true but we can give countless reasons why we are right immediately so as we go along in our life we are continuously making up realities in our mind we're dreaming our life into existence. And as you all know the nature of a dream, if you think about something scary, it appears right there. If you think about something nice, it appears right there. In our normal everyday life, it works kind of in a similar way, but there is some sort of buffer. It, it takes a little bit of time. But if you're continuously dwelling on the negative, you are slowly because the material reality is a very slow, very heavy, very sluggish thing. You're pulling stuff into existence which is corresponding with your internal state. And surely that also works with the other, other way around. We can make use of that on the spiritual path, but this is by far not the goal of the spiritual path. Some people mistake that for the goal. Why well, can manifest? I can do this and I can do that and then I'll be very, uh, very good at this and very good at that. That's not what the spiritual path is all about. 
but it can be very helpful. Particularly if you have low self-esteem, you feel, oh, I can never do this, you know. To change your way of thinking, to reprogram your way of thinking. By using more useful thoughts and learning to kind of feel yourself into these new thoughts. I am adorable. I'm lovely. I am such a nice person. How does it feel like to, th to think these thoughts? I'm such a nice person. How does it feel like to you to say that honestly to yourself? Does it feel honest? I am an enlightened being. How does it feel like? If you play with these kind of thoughts, I am an unenlightened being that must become enlightened. How does that feel like? I'm dishonest. I'm messing up quite a lot. How does that feel like? Play with these thoughts so you get to know kind of your inner realm of thinking. How do you feel about yourself? Do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel bad about yourself? What's your mental, emotional character makeup? A good way to reveal that is the following exercise. So here we go. You get completely naked. And you sit down in front of a mirror. And you look yourself into your own eyes. And you simply wait. And then you listen to your emotional state. Your mind will try to verbalize things. Oh, what's wrong with me? Or, oh, I'm such a nice person. Or, oh, I'm really not looking good. Or something like that. That is not important. What's important is your emotional frequency in that moment. While you're looking yourself into your eyes. What's going on on the level of feeling? And you should stay in front of the mirror. Not just look five minutes and then go away. Five minutes is way too little. You should stay there at least half an hour to 45 minutes, and that's still a very little time. You want to stay put with yourself. It's like doing a meditation. You're getting rid of all your clothes. You're not here to pretend. You're here to receive yourself within a space of complete honesty. That's what the nakedness is symbolizing in that. So you're working with the language of symbolic, uh, symbolic symbolism. It's a living metaphor. You're sitting naked in front of a mirror. You're looking at yourself, so to say. And you're looking at yourself naked. No makeup. No Photoshop. No pretense at all. And no running away either. No phone in between you and the mirror. No book. No conversation with someone else. Just you looking at yourself. And just looking. And then feel. That way we quickly notice how is our emotional, mental makeup. What is really going on inside how do I feel about myself? For many people, it ends up as a big surprise. Many, many things come to the surface that we never really notice about ourselves. The way we feel about ourselves, the way we think about ourselves, all that starts to become shown. Powerful exercise. You can try it out. It can reveal all kinds of things. And then meditate. Notice. How do I feel about myself? Am I okay? Do I really love myself? Does that love go beyond the body? How about my past? How about things that I am afraid of concerning the future? Etc., etc. All of that we learn to accept receive with honesty and relax and yes you can do it everyone can do it and you are able to receive everything 
everyone is able to. So that would be another aspect of prayer and I'm sure there are many others also which might come up uh, during a later talk, I don't know. Now that feels to be enough for this evening concerning prayers or the power of prayer. Uh, to give you just another kind of little viewpoint. Are there any questions? No questions? All right, then. Have a nice weekend. All the best, guys. And uh, 